Okay, we should be live. Yeah? Yay! All right. So, um, this is another teaching for the virus yeah, that we all are going through. And everybody's starting to take very lightheartedly. Yeah? And uh, uh, it would be a good idea if everybody kind of really didn't do that. Yeah? And everybody uh, really looked at facts and consider reality and <clears throat> not follow what politics might say or what governor may say over another governor or the people who are pushing to uh, be able to go back to work or do whatever it is they want to do in life. Uh, we have uh, over 183,000 people who have had the virus. Yeah. And there, we, we have over 380 million people in America. Yeah, 380 million people. Yeah. And in order to really deal with this virus, we need to test everybody to know who has the virus. Or at least get a scale of how many people have the virus and where that's located, all these different things, at least have some factual understanding as to what's going on, rather than just the political and the economic desire to uh, get back to work and get everything back going as it, as it needs to be. There is 380 million people in, in America alone. And we have only tested 4 million. 4 million people. That's it. You know, so that number can't be very high in New York. That can, number can't be very high. 380 million people and only tested 4 million. And people are under an illusion for some strange thought, you know, that everything seems to be fine. You know, and, and that... Uh, we're just now uncovering the fact that if you go to a place where they have old people in old folks' homes, they're, they're laying in bed dead. And rooms are being filled up with dead bodies. And all you got to do is actually go there. But people are too afraid to go there. You know, those who have gone there found what I just said. That's where the people are dying the most. You know, they're, they're not not. They actually are. And they actually do not have people coming to work to take care of them. They're getting sick too. You know, so there is, we are 380 million people. How many of those people are old people in old folks' homes? Yeah, none of them's being tested. Yeah, let alone, they're just dying. And people are in a state of mind of just going, well, they're going to die anyway. That just is beyond belief. You know, to, to not have that empathy, to think right off the bat, what about the old people in the old folks' home? People over 50 are the ones who are dying the most, having the worst symptoms. And yet it wasn't until just recently someone actually looked into it and found that there were a lot of dead bodies. Well, we're all in isolation. How many old people are at home? How many people are at home? Dead. Have not been found. Yeah. We're in process of dying and haven't been to a doctor, haven't been tested, and are just dying because our system is overwhelmed. If you're really poor, you're a great deal of a chance you're not going to go. Yeah? You're just going to hope that it goes away and you die. This happened to kids. It happened to little kids. And yet there are people like our president saying that it's very likely little kids won't get hurt by this. There are very few deaths along that line. You know, so we can maybe send the kindergartners back to work, back to school. You know, and it, this whole thing is not what anybody thinks. This is a devastating, like a plague. Yeah, and the only way it could be dealt with is through isolation, 
long-term isolation, especially in states where there is a lot going on. In the United States, California is big. Washington's big. Oregon's big. Yeah. Alaska is overwhelming. People are dying left and right in Alaska. They're not even checking in to the Indians. How many are dying in the reservations? You know? The death toll is nothing compared to what it really is. Yeah. And the people who get real sick are getting real sick. You know? And we're going to have a really bad experience in the next five months. Not one month, not five days, but five months. Because we've gone from the 1st of April, and we have now reached nearly a million people had the virus. Yeah? And over a hundred, so many thousands of people are dying from it, and yet we don't really know the real numbers. But the numbers are so high. Right now in America, our situation is like this. If you look at this, you'll see that in the United States alone is 833,000 people have, that we know of have been sick of this virus. Multiply that by 10, at least by 10. Because this is the only people who've gone to the hospital, talked to a doctor, and got tested. We've only tested 4 million people. We are so inadequately prepared for this, and the numbers are so extremely high, we can't complain to China, and we can't complain to anybody else. We need to learn from this, because over the next five months, we're going to reach a million people. Because look at this, on a day-to-day -day basis, deaths on a day-to-day -day basis, 42,264 in America, just just, that's insane. That's how much we've come to. Spain, 21,717. Italy, 25,000. We are the United States. One of our states is much bigger than Italy. Yeah? Most of our states is a whole lot bigger than Spain. You know? So that's why we have these numbers. So as Americans... We are responsible for our fellow man. We are going to kill everybody, every one of us, unless we take a full responsibility over the fact that we are the United States, the largest continent of groups of nations, states, that can make a choice of whether or not they independently can behave certain ways and then affect the other states and have no control over this thing. We don't need martial law. We, don't, we just need compassion and empathy and understanding to we're not blocked by these states. Yeah? We can see and feel everybody. Look at these statistics. Yeah? You have no idea what passes from one to the next. Yeah? yeah so the numbers are really high. You can look at those. And then... There are more numbers. 330 million people in the United States, but only 4 million have been tested. 330 million. And look how many. We have 830,000 people who have had the virus. Yeah, That's an enormous number of people. And if you look at the deaths on a day-to-day -day basis, Right now, they're saying it's all going down. It's all balancing out. Yeah, we're at a curve. Yeah, we're starting a, a going down curve. Maybe even it's leveling out. You know, leveling out, leveling out. Yeah, at 7,000 a day. Leveling out 
at 7,000 a day, at 5,368 a day, at 6,432 a day. That's just one day, one night, morning to night, 24-hour period, dead people. 26,000 people, thousands and thousands of people in a week. In one day, 6,000 people. On April 17th, 8,329 deaths. Yeah, and yet people are saying, oh, I, I think it's going down. I think it's okay to go out. I think we should open restaurants. I think we should open the beaches. I think it's all fine. It's all going to come back, everything real, real quick. But if we look at this and we go all the way down to April 1st, there was 5,000 deaths on April 1st. There's 6,000 deaths on April 2nd. There's 5,900 deaths on April 3rd. There's another 6,000 deaths on the 4th. Let's creep ahead. It's supposed to be getting better. April 7th, there are 7,600 deaths. Where is it getting better? Let's go to the 10th. 7,165 deaths. At what point does it get better? Everybody said, if you watch the news, it's getting better. Truth isn't that. And this is only half the truth. There's a whole other list I could show you to where they are verifying that the numbers of deaths aren't correct. If we say 6,708, there's at least 1,500 to 3,000 more deaths in reality. You know, so we're looking at 10,000 people a day on an average. Yeah, that's an enormous number. That's just insane. And as we're supposedly seeing, we're being told that we're seeing this going down. If you go from the 12th, it's 5,600. If you jump to the 16th, it's 6,800. If you jump to the 18th, it's 6,420. If you jump to the 21st, just the other day, it's 7,062. And today, it's 6,607. At one point, does it go down? This is a very bad virus, and we are not behaving correctly. The only time it goes down is in isolation. There are countries, Germany and others, who have chosen not to take isolation, but they're now suffering for it. Their numbers are going up. The volume of people dying is going up. There's no safe haven. There is no special, I am Mexico, we're never going to be touched. You, you can't believe this shit. You know? This is the time. This is the time that masses of people die. And they don't need to. Yeah? Yeah. So it really is. It's not about our, our politicians or our business situation or anything. Yeah? It, it is about a fact that there is a virus that is very contagious and that it's affecting people. And it does affect children, and it affects old people, it affects everybody. There is no group that is not affected. There are some groups that are affected more. But that, just give it a little time. This thing literally mutates the way viruses do. When they go in the person, they come out of a person, they do what they do. Yeah? So it's showing all signs that it's not a good thing. It's no way. A process that just comes and goes and lasts maybe a week like a, a simple flu. Yeah. This is much deeper. Yeah. So when I say five months, I'm saying five months because that's how long we're gonna watch deaths. The number of deaths. Yeah. And that's horrifying. We're seeing six thousand an average of seven thousand a day. And these are people that are, are people that we know. We see them in the bed, we witness them die, and then we write it down. 
with what about the old folks home, the people at home, people on the street, the, all the people, yeah? 380 million, just in America alone, yeah? And they are not well, yeah? We have the largest number of people with this virus, the largest number of people dying in America. It's not in wherever country you want to call it, Spain or Italy, where it was a really bad thing. It is now a really bad thing here. And everything that it was in Italy, it is in many of our states. Yeah. You know, so our behavior, you know, to be able to get through this is all about compassion and empathy and patience, virtues, seven virtues that we have to establish and there's no way out of it. You know, we have to establish all of these virtues. Yeah. And in order for us to move forward and 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 make everything right, we have to literally find our simplest lifestyle. Get down to the lowest denominator. And and don't kill yourself. Yeah? You it's not that you can't make money, you can. It's not that you don't have something to do. You do. But it needs to be creatively done. It needs to be done in your home. Done online. Done in some way. Yeah. But we, we can all survive through this thing. Yeah. The main thing is that we don't allow ourselves to be moved into a nonchalant process of thinking that people are not that contagious anymore. And that it's, it, we're not going to pass it on to someone because we haven't been tested. Unless we're tested, we don't know if we're going to kill people. And if you have the virus in you and you're going to pass it on to someone, you may not be the person who dies, but there's a really high chance people are going to die because of you. Yeah? You know, so we need to have compassion and empathy to control our actions. You know, we can't let the devil move us on a normal 24-hour basis. Things have to change so dramatically in order for us to survive. Because this can go on forever. Yeah? We can figure out a way to fix this virus, but trust me, other viruses are going to come. And if we don't gain the compassion and empathy to deal with this properly and not pass it on to another person, you know, then we're just going to continue dying of viruses because we don't know how to take it responsibly. Yeah. So I'm going to do two invocations. One is the great invocation, and I'm Jesus. Yeah. So that's a very helpful note. Yeah. And um, yeah, it, there's a lot that's going on uh, as far as healing. It, it's uh, th there is a spiritual covenant in relationship to humanity, and. Uh, my work is to help people bridge uh, their doubting mind, yeah? the, the area to where they're not sure about God and they're, they're intellectual and they're kind of, you know, doing what they're doing, you know. But, you know, they have no idea that they're sucking up the soul and opportunity of the soul on earth. You know, so it really isn't just, uh, you know, I, I've got a choice. I, 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 you know, I have the right to not believe in God, yeah? And I have the right to not have faith, and I have the right to think negatively, and I have a right to have all these vices inside of me, yeah? Because that's what humans are, and that's not true. It's not what humans are. Humans are angelic, divine expressions of God's grace. It's what they are. But if they choose to be disciples of the lower nature, that is the left-hand path, there is not even a choice to be made. All you got to do is just live. Express yourself without the choice to live with God. But live without God. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and you can go philosophy on me all you want. But without Jesus, you're never going to meet God. You're never going to find the truth. Yeah. You're never going to have the experience. You're never going to find a way to be able to support all this fear. And be able to make it through it with a, a conviction of understanding and an awakening and a revelation and all the things that come with God. And lessening the negativity and fear 
going more into the outcome of this is all a part of God's plan. It doesn't matter if it's a person's death. It doesn't matter if any circumstance is going on. We need to get with God. Yeah? Because we want this to be God's plan that everybody gets healed and everybody behaves. But if you got a negative mind and you have doubt and depression and things of that nature, it's really putting a crimp into the energetic field of the soul. And it slows down you know, the, the ability for people to respond properly, think properly, because we are our brother's keepers. Yeah? There's no separation between us all. So in this responsibility, we're responsible for other people by our own behavior. Yeah? And that's virtues. You know, every time we're put into this situation, we're to learn virtues. And they're hard because it takes away all of our habits, yeah? all our toys, all our things that we are, are dependent upon, our business, our job, everything. Yeah? We've got to be able to do this without any of that going on. Yeah? And the strongest way that anybody can make it through life is with God. Yeah? And if, if we're in this thing, and we have so many professors that don't believe in God, you know, so many doctors don't believe in God, and yet they're the healers. And, and they're, they're actually blocking the healing from taking place. Bad position. We need to evolve, come out of this thing with more compassion and more relationships with God, even if you're a doctor or a professor or an Indian chief, whoever you are. You better get it right with Jesus Christ. Because there ain't no other way to God. Yeah? You can be a Muslim, well, you better get it right with Jesus Christ. Yeah? If you're a Hindu, you better get it right with Jesus Christ. Yeah? If you're a Buddhist, you better get it right with Jesus Christ. Yeah? Because there's no other Buddha. There's no other God. Yeah? And in a time like this, this isn't the time to mess around. Yeah? The Dalai Lama is not going to tell you, you better get it right with Jesus Christ. Yeah? But there's a lot of people out there who are getting it right with Jesus Christ, and they're finding out. It doesn't matter whether or not they're a Muslim or a Jew or anything. Jesus can touch them, awaken them, and they themselves can be completely purified and be a different person. Have all the virtues that Christ walks around with are now inside of them. Yeah? That's the only difference between being with God or not with God. And to get there, you've got to go with Jesus because Jesus has the virtues. Yeah? And if you want to deal with this thing, like Jesus said to all the disciples, you better learn to do this yourself. Yeah? You need to learn to heal. You need to learn to be positive. You need to learn to exercise people. You need to do these things without any negativity, without thinking, oh, that's not my job. I don't have that ability. Yeah? So not even just that, but all the way to the point of not going out. Yeah? Not talking to other people to go out. Oh, I think we should go to a football game. I can't wait until the next football game. We're here to experience this, that there is no need for football games. There is no need for people who sit on TV and make themselves out to God, as being God. Yeah? There's no need for a Kardashian marrying an Antichrist who says that he's God. It all adds up in a relationship of hell. Yeah? And that's where everybody puts their time and energy and their their whole identity of what is a day, what are people like, what are Americans like, and yet it's all a lie. Yeah? And we have the opportunity right now to heal from all this or suffer from it. And just watch the numbers go up of what famous people died this year of the coronavirus. Because that's what we're going to be witnessing. How many of our loved ones have died of the coronavirus? How many of your family members died of the coronavirus? How many in your town? Yeah. If we don't deal with this properly, all we're going to have is just constant news about how many people in a family now 
We had a family of five, but now only have a family of two. That's devastating. Yeah. And we get down five years, and we were 380 million people, but now we're only 75. Yeah. They can end up like that really easy. All over the world. And it's not about vaccines. It's not about, it's about right behavior. It's about not lying. It's about doing the right thing. Yeah. Not about vaccines. It's about testing. It's about being honest with people. It's about sharing all the money of America and getting it into the hands of humanity and not into the airplane companies. Yeah. Because it's, it, it's all going to just dwindle up into emptiness because there is no more oil. We're abundant too much. We are not capitalist anymore. Nobody can capitalize on us because we don't have anything. When you don't have anything, you find out it's the people who's in charge. People, yeah? That's why everything is going off. That's why there is no need for oil anymore because the people make a difference. All they got to do is choose. Oh, I'm not going to drive my car. Oh, I'm not going to go to work. Oh, I'm not going to... Yeah, All those things overnight made a difference you can't imagine. But our biggest problem is overpopulation. We are 380 million people in America and growing. We need to be about 120 million people. And kind of stable. Every country has its stability point where the soul finds the soul. You know, reincarnation balances out. The soul finds the soul. Yeah. And when there is no soul finding the soul, we just abundantly capitalize on abundance. Too big of a house, too much money, a big ego. Yeah. That means I need to have five or six kids. Yeah. Because they're all going to come out with my names. Yeah. Johnny Jr., Johnny Jr. 2, Johnny Jr. 3, I wish I'd have a girl, <laughs> you know? This overpopulation is the biggest problem that we have, and it's not that this is about fixing that problem with a whole bunch of viruses, yeah? But our problem is for pollution and all the things for capitalism, things that we buy and do, the only reason we have a lack of sustainability is because we have too much consumerism. And that consumerism is due to a number of people on the planet consuming stuff and making waste. Yeah? And it's so imbalanced that the enormous number of people are very poor, getting poor and starving to death. Yeah. So the viruses is one thing, but I can show you another list of an equal number of people who are dying due to starvation. So we have world virus that's killing people, and we have starvation that is killing people because of the pollution. Yeah. And the kind of industries of burning up the Amazons and taking coil, oil out of the ground or finding diamonds or working with coal, all those things poor people do. Yeah. And they live in those standards and they live in that mercury pollution. Yeah. These are millions and millions and millions and millions of people all living in those standards. And it's all due to capitalism. Because we're just brainwashed in our materialism and our capitalism and our desire for energy. Yeah. So we need to, and we're going to, minimize and find sustainability in the things that we eat. We eat things that are sustainable. We buy things that are local. Yeah. We work locally. Yeah. We try and work on our own. Yeah. We make money from our own work, and we get paid for that. Yeah. And we know the balance of what is coming, and what is going. Yeah. All those things. If we do those things with virtue, yeah, then we change, you know, everything from going now living in a tiny house and it's all solar and all these things, you know, it takes 
we can go from now to five years, we can take this horrifying situation and turn it into a new lifestyle and come out the other side. Where people move out of the cities and they stop working for all these different companies and Amazon begins to shut down and all this begins to clog and all these things where economy was growing in a certain way, it starts to really slow down. Yeah. Because we don't need five cars. We don't need a big, big house with 20 rooms. We don't need, you know, 100 employees. We can keep a much smaller business. You know, something goes wrong, fewer people will suffer. You know, but people don't really think like that. They want to franchise and they want to go big and big and big. But we're now all suffering from those thought forms because we're such a large mass of people. And we're in an unemployed state of almost 60% in America. And they say it's like this, but it's got to be 100%. And there's nobody going to work. So what's the reality, you know? It's extreme. And it's because we have so many numbers of people. And we're all dependent upon all this capitalistic process. And in this five-year cycle, we have the ability to transform that completely you know where banks will let go and mortgages will be released and leases will be no longer held on to laws will come into place to allow people to change their lifestyle to a much lower cost of living on their own yeah all on their own without needing you know fifty dollars an hour you know where they can just live exactly according to sustainability and all of a sudden, we start balancing out after about five or six years. And over this time, people choose, hey, I really don't feel I need to get into a deep relationship, you know, get on to marriage and all this shit, you know. I think I'm going to build a house instead. And uh, I think I'm just going to live in it <laughs> instead, <laughs> you know, and enjoy myself quite a bit instead, you know. And I'll see how many years goes by. You know, instead of, you know, obligating myself to a relationship, you know. And it, it's a hard road. That's a right-hand path. It's a very, it, the easy road, the easiest road, you know. You find people at a bar, you find people at your friend's house, you know, and all this stuff comes along and say, hey, look, you two, don't you look great together, you know. You know, <laughs> you know. It's that relationship, those pushy, pushy things that gets people out of the position of becoming a better person. If they had more time to be on their own a bit, you know, they would be less fidgety, <laughs> less freaked out, less afraid. Yeah. It really, we all are coming from a world to where we're never allowed to be alone, ever. You have parents that tell you who you're going to marry. They have parents that tell you, you can go to college, but it has to be nearby. And if you're going to go to college, it has to be this way. And, you know, if you don't marry these kind of people, I'm never going to pay for your marriage, you know. All these, all these things that leverage assholeness, you know, <laughs> into pushiness, into a lifestyle. You know, so I'm hoping that all of us come to Christ, yeah, and learn the lifestyle that comes out of Christ. Yeah. And it leads us on a path, it leads us onto a situation where we're going to see things by acting in these ways. We're going to see things that reveals stuff to us about the goodness in other people and the badness in other people. And you literally begin to discern the good from the bad. And the bad is bad. It's ugly. It's stinky. It's sticky. It's got oozy stuff in it. Yeah? And it comes out of it in words, in thoughts, and actions. Yeah? And it's very, you can't trust it because it's so elementally impure. Because it doesn't take these virtues and live through these virtues. And it requires purity to sustain the virtues. Yeah? To keep them in your body, to keep things going in that way. Yeah? So taking on a simple life, you know, is Christianity. Yeah, it's the Christian way. Yeah. 
So I want to do these two pujas in order to help us do that. Yeah, one is the Great Invocation. Um, I I established the Great Invocation back in the uh, 1920s, and I did three stanzas. Yeah, and the first one was in the early 1920s. The second one was around 1935, and then the fourth one was around 1946, just before my birth. And that was the invocation of the coming of the Christ. Yeah, but the other ones were the alignment of the will and the awakening of Shambhala, bringing Shambhala on earth, and then the alignment of the will, right relationship of the will, goodwill in action, things like that. That's the second stanza. And then the third stanza, it all comes together. All three become one, and that's called the Great Invocation. Yeah. So this that I'll be doing is all of those stanzas in one as the invocation of the coming of Christ and the outcome of that on earth. Yeah. So it's pretty neat. Yeah. So let's do our invocation. Just repeat after me. I invoke the power, the love, and the wisdom of my ashram, soul, and monad. To guide me into the right activity in the plan. To clarify and stimulate my mind. To transform and to heal and transmute my feelings and emotions. To energize and vitalize and heal my physical and etheric body. So there is a normal flow of energy in my physical and etheric body. Through this day and every day, I ask this in the name of the Christ to serve the one. All in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Forces of light bring illumination to mankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May humanity of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all mankind be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the Great Ones. So let it be, and help us do our part.
I invoke the holy archangels of heaven. Let the lords of liberation issue forward. Let them bring secure to the sons of mankind. Let the rider from the secret place come forth. And come say, come forth, almighty one. Let the souls of mankind awaken to the light. And may they stand with mast and tent. Let the fiat of the Lord go forth. The end of the woe has come. Come forth, O mighty one. The hour of service of the saving force has now arrived. Let it be spread abroad, O mighty one. Let light and love and power Love to carry forth the work is widely spread abroad. The active aid of all who know the truth is also here. Come forth, Almighty One, and blend these three. Construct a great defending wall. The rule of evil now must end. the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of mankind. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of mankind. May Christ return to earth. From the center, where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, a purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of mankind, let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. to serve and not exact due service. I seek to heal, not to hurt. Let pain bring due reward of light and love. Let the soul control the outer form and let life and all events. 
and bring forth to light the love which underlies the happenings of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavage be gone. Let love prevail. Let all mankind love.
Play my little drum. Where I come from, the drum is used to invoke the Great Spirit. And the Great Spirit is the Father. Yeah? And the Great Spirit is what gives us life. Yeah? It's nothing else gives us life. It's the great spirit that takes us from life and gives us another life and gives us a life during that life. And that great spirit is connected to every living thing. So it's only through the great spirit do we find oneness. Yeah? Not through any other form of nature or God worship or anything. Only through the great spirit. So the Great Spirit can be invoked by the nature of knowing that the Great Spirit exists. You, know, you can communicate with the Great Spirit, but you have to humble yourself. You can't be anything in order to communicate with the Great Spirit. So myself, I play a drum, or I do my pujas, or I teach, yeah, but everything that I do, I believe is moved by the Great Spirit. Yeah, so my drum is moved by the Great Spirit. My drum plays a song that the Great Spirit loves, yeah, literally adores. And that influence of this adjuration between me and the Great Spirit by me doing this offering. And one of the greatest offerings the Great Spirit loves is music or drum or dance or song things of nature that comes out of a person that is elevated due to their virtues. Yeah, so this spontaneous act is invoking the elements of nature inside and around us all to hopefully bring about a planetary healing brought about by us gaining more virtues and behavior and creating a better karmic adjustment in our lives through the Great Spirit. Yeah. So I ask people to, to wake up and become one with Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is made Jesus Christ by the Great Spirit. Jesus Christ is the offering of the Great Spirit to humanity so that we can actually talk to the Great Spirit. We can communicate with the Great Spirit. Yeah. We can take a right relationship to the Great Spirit and know that the Great Spirit itself is in a, in a position to change our lives. Yeah. But that has to be invoked. Yeah. So a prayer, an offering, you know, even when you eat food, it's really good to be thankful. Yeah. And just in your heart, because your heart and the Great Spirit is how you communicate. And it's not through your emotions, your wanting, your desiring, and your fulfillment. Yeah. It's through your heart and your appreciation. That is what keeps you a relationship to the Great Spirit. Your appreciation to other people, your appreciation, period, to your life, which is provided by the Great Spirit. Yeah? So that's how we become imbued by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit that's coming from the Great Spirit. And it becomes us. We become animated by the Holy Spirit. And if we're not in this relationship I'm speaking of, then we're animated by the evil spirit. And we have no idea because we have pride. We have no idea because we have a lack of virtues, and those virtues make up all the karma we have in the world. 
that can be changed to where enormous blessings can make manifest into the world by changing the left hand spin to the right hand spin yeah by connecting to the great spirit and us becoming the holy spirit and when we become the holy spirit we become healers and when we pray god listens god answers and god sends angels and they come in the form of people places and things yeah so those things around us is life and it's all made manifest by the great spirit in a very angelic divine way and it's all around us just a matter of whether or not we have the holy spirit flowing through us to make us one with everything in our life that is provided by the great spirit okay so this is my little drum enjoy just relax
Shambhala drum. Yay. Okay, enjoy everybody. Please stay well. Do better. <laughs>